Today I have the privilege of sitting down with Colin McQuay, the president of Mutual Link. And Colin, I want you to give us just a, a big overview of the company and the important work that you're doing for our society. Sure. So Mutual Link has developed what we call an interoperable communication resource sharing platform. And we developed this platform in response to the uh, Department of Homeland Security policy around what they call the National Infrastructure Protection Plan. And within the National Infrastructure Protection Plan, they describe uh, an environment where all of the critical sectors of our society, uh, what they call the critical infrastructure and key resource doctrine, uh, are able to uh, manage through incidents that happen. So no longer is it just about first responders, but now hospitals are involved and financial institutions and places of mass gathering. And all of these places need to uh, have a communications technology that uh, enables this policy. And that's what uh, we put together with Mutual Link. So it sounds like with having this many different, and, and earlier you mentioned there were 18 different verticals that were part of that plan, but this, this is a pretty complex problem that you're trying to solve. It's a very, very complex problem, uh, and it's complex from, from many perspectives. Uh, you have all of these 18 different types of organizations with 18 different types of missions, uh, with all different forms of communications technology, uh, and you have the massive geography of the United States, so it's an extraordinarily complex problem. And how we've tried to solve it is by addressing uh, the kind of the, the core reason that the problem still exists today. And it's not necessarily a technology issue. Uh, it's really an issue of how do you make people willing to participate in such a network. And we learned through uh, a lot of experience that a couple attributes need to be present in order for people to be willing. And those notions are around sovereignty, or people don't want to feel like they're ceding control of their critical communications to someone else. Uh, and these networks also need to be extremely secure because nobody's going to share something out on an open network. So we put a network together that uh, spans the scope of the, the nation, but also is uh, very cognizant of the, these notions of sovereignty and security. So with so many different people, and, and, it's, and it sounds like it's kind of an opt-in type technology where they choose to participate, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, you know, it's it's that speaks really to the, to this notion of sovereignty, uh, and we also were were very uh, thoughtful of the uh, the way that people had tried to solve this problem in the past was they were very focused on these one to one communication paths, and uh, while that kind of makes sense, thinking about who it is that you need to communicate with, what we found is that that doesn't scale. And as soon as you add multiples into that equation, the complexity goes up dramatically. So we ask people to think about the problem solved differently as well, uh, and as opposed to being focused on who it is that you need to communicate with, instead focus on what is the communications media that I have, where is it concentrated, and what kind of complex problems can I solve by doing that. And as an example, within those sectors, uh, exist ports, transportation, and you could imagine an incident that happens on the East Coast uh, that could be germane to someone on the West Coast in a similar environment to share their critical communications, and it was just that kind of world that we wanted to enable, uh, and it's extraordinarily complex, and by taking it down to this lowest common denominator of simply enabling media, we're able to solve those things. So it's a distributed type network topology, is that? Completely distributed, uh, no centralized server, which again speaks to the sovereignty. Uh, when you have the centralized uh, server, uh, someone owns that, and mm -hmm. it uh, really kind of precludes others from being willing to participate. So how did you address, or how do you address the, the fact that, that these people all have different skill sets and different priorities, and, and how, do you, how do you keep them collaborating in this environment? How do you keep it top of mind, so to say. Sure. You know, so much of what we're trying to do at Mutual Link is help implement policies that exist at, at, the, uh, at both the federal and state level. And one of the policies, again, of the uh, Department of Homeland Security <clears throat> is what they call the interoperability continuum, came out of their science and technology group a few years ago, where they describe the desired end state. And the desired end state for our type of technology is to figure out an everyday use. And because we have such a diverse uh, universe of participants, um, it's really a very difficult problem as for a vendor to, to, to kind of think through. And, and where we came up was, well, let's help institute what we call a NIMS compliant, a National Incident Management System compliant roll call exercise, where we bring in multiples of our customers uh, into an incident. We ask them to contribute their communication resources. We break it apart. It only takes between maybe you know, 30 seconds to a minute. 
and we solve a, a few pretty big problems in that. One is that we know the technology is working. Two, we know that people know how to use it. But we also see human relationships form where they weren't. Uh, and great way to, to evidence that is uh, the miracle on the Hudson when Sully landed on the Hudson River. Uh, were deployed at many of the, the uh, facilities in the region and they got on mutually to coordinate the response and I'm convinced that if we didn't have this easy to use uh, technology that we exercise regularly with our customers that they wouldn't have done that. So usually they say you can you, you can have it easy, you can have it quick, or you can have it cheap and, and so I would think that you solve two of those problems but what about expense? I mean it seems like this would be a very expensive problem to solve. Well, on a, on a, on a national basis, um, perhaps it is an expensive problem to solve from a, from a you know, gross dollars perspective, but we're approaching this from a distributed basis. And we believe that a technology like this is most valuable when it's ubiquitous. At the end of the day, this is on a network, uh, and the value of a network is proportionate to the square of the number of the users. So we wanted to make this as ubiquitous as possible, and certainly cost as a driver in that. So, uh, from a per entity or agency basis, we made the business decision to price this low enough where it could have viral attributes, where price wasn't an impediment to having people join the network. It sounds like you guys have really come up with a solution that will help us all. And so I, I really appreciate you spending some time with us today. How can people find out more about Mutual Link? Well, they can go to our website, uh, mutuallink.net, and we have all sorts of uh, videos and white papers and resources available for everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you.